What's going on, every oh my god, look at my hair. Hey everybody, I just wanted to bring you a quick video today. Uh, it's really nice outside, I happen to have the day off, so I think I'm just gonna start dressing up the engine. So what I have here is the uh, little engine cover that's on the Genesis. I masked it off, got some masking tape inside of all the holes, and I'm gonna paint this a color to match all the other accents. So. Uh, let me take you outside, and we're gonna get the first coat on. I haven't laid out the thing the way I think it would look good sprayed. Um, probably set that back just a bit, just so I can spray each piece individually if I so choose, or just go through like a sweeping motion. But uh, what I have here is this metallic. It says metallic specs, but it's metallic uh, paint. It's a dopey color, duply color, whatever the hell it is. But it's this metallic. I think it will look good with the steering wheel. Uh, and if all goes well on these vent pieces, then I will do it on the other vents. Because there's two more on the car I have yet to take off. And also do it on the things that I wrap since that wrap. Yeah, test spray. And a nice sweeping motion. Now this thing suggested, I think it said two light coats uh, to spray. So it says, yeah, two light coats followed with a medium wet coat. Wait 10 minutes between each coat. Each coat. So I think I'm going to do it that way. So just do a light coat. So I got a quick light coat on that. It's going to be black, so I'm actually going to do more. Since this is black and not like a white base coat, I'm going to have to do more than those suggested coats. I'm trying to attack these vents in a bunch of different angles. But yeah, so... That's the first coat, and then we'll hit it up with the second coat. Oh, I'm already liking the way this looks. <laughs> That's so cool. I like that. All right, but yeah, let's wait. Okay, so now we're on about coat three, and this is coming. Look at this. It's like a crimson color. I love it. I'm gonna have to do a few more coats on the little engine cover here because the white's coming through, but I'm gonna coat them all the same amount. Uh, I kind of abandoned the 10 minutes between coats because it felt like it was drying a lot quicker and didn't really need to wait that long. Something I didn't say though. So um, what I did do since these are plastic is I did sand them a bit with 500 grit sandpaper um, not a lot, just a bit. Get through the uh, top layer. There was a clear coat on the plastics here. Uh, that didn't have anything. The paint was like already chipping up. So I just sanded it for a few minutes to get majority of the paint off. Uh, and then scuff up the paint on there so everything was level. Didn't get any high points. Uh, but yeah, basically I mess inside and outside the numbers. And the inside of these little streaks here are going to be red as well. It's going to be red and black. It's going to look so nice. Uh, I'm really, really, really liking this color. <laughs> so far. We'll see as soon as I get it off. But I'll come back to you after a few more coats. I'm thinking I'm going to put a uh, clear coat on here as well. A uh, satin clear coat because I'm not a big fan of high gloss stuff. I like a nice smooth finish and... I don't know, the satin is just a smooth finish for me. But yeah, I'll come back to you when we're to that point. All right, so this is the final one before the clear cut. So you can see, here's the cap, and then the final product. It may look similar in the camera. No, no it doesn't. Okay, so <laughs> these look nothing alike. I like this better, but these look nothing alike. Shame on you. But look at that. It looks so good. So this is the final product right before I do my clear coat. I should not gonna be able to get to the clear coat tonight. Sun's getting close to sunset and I gotta run out and get something, so I'm not gonna be able to get to that unfortunately. But I'll get straight to that one tomorrow. Damn this looks good. Four to six days later. All right, everybody. I just finished up painting everything. I love the way this looks in the camera. I, I know I keep saying I love it, but I absolutely love it. Uh, 
I didn't get to film actually taking these out, unfortunately. I just kind of rushed and did it when I got off of work. This was basically the last piece of the puzzle. If I can figure it out or want to take the chance of painting the little door trim in my car, uh, the same color, I'll go for that. But uh, I had to fix the wiring for this too because I had messed it up the last time and I had to keep tapping like the top of this because the screen would go white. So that wasn't connected right. So I'm going to be able to get that done, but like, I love the way this finish came out. It came out so perfect. The only thing you can see is like a little bit of white in there. That's because it's nearly impossible to get a fucking spray in there without getting it all over the fucking place. But yeah, I love the way it turned out. It turned out so much better than the wrap. And it looked just as close to the wrap, if not better, actually. I like these better because it's a darker color than the wrap. And it matches my will, like, almost perfectly. Uh, but, yeah, let me take you downstairs to show you everything else that's being... That's drying right now, actually. All right, so part in the mess. <laughs> these are buckets for, like, wet sanding and stuff. I've been doing it in here. But... I got these guys painted. That one I just finished... Uh... That one, I just finished doing the primer on it. I was using this Rust-Oleum Satin Clear Enamel. Uh, that's just so it's not super glossy. I like the way that light hits it just like that. That's perfect. Just like my wheel. Um, this, however, I fucked up on. So, this is not how it fucked up. So, it was actually a lot more, a lot less bad looking. So, there was like the tiniest speck of dust on the paint when I was doing the clear cut. I had set, let this sit and let it dry and I tried to get it off with a piece of tape and it ripped the hole straight through everything. Like right here is where it did it. That's the reason why it's like the easiest part to see. It went straight through everything and I was like, well, fuck it. So I took a piece of 200 grit sandpaper and just sanded everything down. And actually it turned out a lot smoother now just because of that. And also, this is the last part. This one was drying, so it's been about a half hour or so. Feels nice and smooth. That's the good thing about that. This dries unbelievably quick. It dries in like 15, 20 minutes. But yeah, feels nice and smooth over here now. Up here is meh, but nobody's going to really be touching that, so it doesn't really matter. Honestly, nobody's going to be touching anything. Maybe the radio, but that's just myself. I don't like people touching my radio. <laughs> but yeah, so we got that. I'm going to redo this tomorrow, but I'm going to get that, that, and those two installed in the car right now. Because driving out, what driving around without a radio really sucks. <laughs> uh, luckily, it wasn't blasting music because it would have been an awful drive to and from work. <laughs> Uh, and I can't go to Taco Bell, unfortunately, because I can't go through the drafter. I never go inside the place. So let's go inside, get these things installed, or go to the car and get the stuff installed. All right, everybody. So I'm using my phone to record this one because, well, there's too much. There's not enough light on here, and I need a flash. So this is currently what we're looking like right now. <laughs> the biggest thing is there's no controls here so me getting this back in is going to fix it the home depot home depot bucket just has all my parts in it with plastic and stuff so they don't get scratched up um it's a lot e it was a lot easier to do it that way so i'm going to install all the parts except for the part that covers this the part to cover the speakers going in so this one the middle part and this uh if you want to know how to take these out it's really simple it's not that hard <laughs> I already showed you how to take this off when installing uh, my short shifter, which actually has been rattling a lot in here. So I got to get that fixed up. Uh, and what I have for that is this here because I don't have any uh, fucking Loctite. So I'm just going to use some gasket maker to cut down on the vibration. It's a thick rubber, so that should help a little bit. But um, I digress. This one's the easiest one to take off. You just pop it up. This one, same deal. Pull it out, comes out. These are connected. 
This one is a bitch and a half to disconnect. Just FYI. This one's not that hard. This one was a bitch and a half. And in, in fact, I had to end up prying it off because my little clip ended up breaking off right there. It was supposed to look like that, but it, it's gone now. So yeah, that's a bitch and a half to pull off. But you basically just push that straight back. You don't even have to really take it off unless you're taking off this entire thing here. Uh, I, I wasn't doing that, so yeah. Uh, there's four screws holding this piece in to the one assembly uh, that you'll have to take off from the back side. I'll show you where those are. Four screws holding this guy in. Uh, that connector is for your cigarette liner slash car charger. Um, of course, you already know how to take the seat warmers out. But yeah, I'm going to work my way from the top down because this is literally the easiest piece. You know what you do with this? You take it, ah, you take it, you find the edge, you find those holes, you line it up, and you smack it down. There, it's in. Piece one of the puzzle. And we just gotta work our way down. This one is a bitch and a half to get, so I'm, I'll get back to you when this one's half halfway installed. But real quick, I'll just show you how to take this part out. Uh, there's a screw right in here. You can't take this out unless you take this one out first, which if you get a pry tool, since this is really easy mark, get a pry tool and like a microfiber so that you don't scratch this up. Um, and then just pop it out. You see where the clips are. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. Just basically in all the corners. Uh, but after you do that, there's two screws. One that goes there, and then one that goes there. And then two more down here in the front. One that goes there, one that goes there. When you take those out, you can move this forward. Uh, now, these little black things here, these keep this lined up. So basically it won't move around whenever uh, you're trying to install it. Uh, but yeah, that and under here, let's see, where is it at? All right, so under here, this little piece of metal right here slides over a plastic tab. So you'll have to apply a bit of uh, strength to pull this out, but don't feel like you're breaking anything because you're not, as long as you don't pull way too hard and pull it too far. Um, but yeah, you should be able to get that out. And honestly, this should just come straight out. Again, these prongs aren't the easiest thing. All right, yeah, there you go, see? Comes right out, there's the two screws up top, two screws down bottom. So I'll get this on and I'll get right back to you. Almost forgot, don't wanna forget this part. So there's two things you have to disconnect to be able to bring this off. Also, there's four screws, which I cannot find. So I don't recommend losing these screws, but they go in on the side here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, they go in right there. This one here, in order to take the ribbon cable out, let me put my car in gear so I can get it out the way. But in order to get the ribbon cable out, there's this little black bar that you have to push down on. Pull down on this side and this side at the same time. So basically, if you can take like two fingers and pull it down, that will loosen the ribbon cable. Now, whenever you're putting this back in, make sure that you're putting it in straight because this is actually the reason why I had to keep smacking my entire player in order to get the piece back on or in order to get the screen to turn on and go from white. But yeah, other than that, you also have this connector here, which is just a little pull connector. It's not a clip or anything. It just literally lines up and slides right in. Just make sure you line the notches and everything up on there. But yeah, once you get that in, you're home free. Four to six days later. All right, so I got it pushed in, got everything connected. Now we're just going to test this out. My fob is defective. I don't know why it drains the batteries in like two months. I have no idea the reason why it keeps getting drained so quickly. But we're just going to test it out. You can see, keys in my hand, it's not detecting it. I can even try lock and unlock the doors, it doesn't do anything. So, I gotta go down to my little thing here. There we go, click that in. Do that, make sure the screen comes on. There you go. Power works. Copyright. 
<laughs> button. Oh, okay. It is working. Cool, cool. Tune button, make sure that works. That does nothing right now for some reason. I wonder. Hmm. Interesting. Like, scratch not removing that thing if you're gonna go through all the painting and everything of doing it just go through the hassle of removing that because it unless you might do what I did and now it may not look that bad but I'm kind of a perfectionist so it got scratched there Let's see where else right there which doesn't really matter because well that's gonna be covered but the place that was really bugging me is right there like there's a nice scratch right on the side that's on the majority of what you can see so that's that that's kind of upsetting but uh yeah so at least now i can get these screws here on the back so i'll get back to you when i'm done screwing this stuff in all right so that's done now now before i get this all put back together i want to make sure that this is going to stay in place so i take this thing off here top part off I have my little adapter for some reason I, I bought this so that it came with the size that was supposed to be here same thing with this guy back here actually and they fucking lied to me too which was awesome the, these threads don't match up they're supposed to match up they don't match up so it's whatever I need to get this back in here which is not the easiest thing in the world so Let's get this back in here, hopefully without leaving any open holes or anything like that. So, yeah, I'll get back to you when this is all put together. So now we're just gonna stick this guy back into place, get these things plugged in back here. All right, so I got all that shit connected up. Now we just line it up with this here and we close that but once we get this lined up again look in there make sure you're lining all the holes up those are lined up so press same thing on that side press wait cool now it's clipped in everything matches up Nicely. Nice, 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 nice. So, oops. Let's get this thing. Now this kind of hinges in there. We're not gonna stick that on just yet because we need to take off our... Yeah, come on. Yep. We need to take off our seat warmer buttons. So now that we got those off, we take one of them, this one is the driver's side, get the driver's side hole, and these literally just go right in the hole. They click in, grab the other one, put it in the hole. Cool. You got that? Now I'll just come back over here, get one of the wires. Alright, so now we got that one in. Now all you have to do is make sure you kind of angle it back like that, just so those hinges go into these slots. The forward motion, push it down. And it clicks right into place. There you go. Now, all we gotta do, stick that back down on there. And, where, uh-oh. Where did I put the? Oh, here it is. Alright, now we just need to put this back on here. There you go. Alright. Literally, everything's done. This is still going to rattle whenever I shift, but it actually doesn't rattle itself. And this is what we look like, boys. All red, everything. I got the vents installed. All my vents. That cover, I just need to redo this tomorrow. And I should be done. Yeah, that's everything. 
All right, guys, I wanted to thank you for watching the video. I know my hair is probably out of whack. It's around 1 o'clock in the morning right now. So uh, it's pulling a, pulling a late night to get this installed. Um, don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to get... Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. If you want to see more from me, don't forget to subscribe down low. You'll get alerts when everything's done. And comment on anything that you like. What? People driving down my street at 1 a.m.? Uh, comment, comment down low if there's anything you want to see in a video or anything like that. And anything you want me to cover in particular. Uh, or really just anything you want to comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.